right. Challenges of Operating Your Own Authority, part three. Let's go. We got building relationship with brokers. How complicated is this? Uh, how complicated was it for you, Mike? Uh, it, it, was, uh, it was pretty complicated. Um, the challenge uh, that everyone will have at the, at the very early stages in the, in the business uh, with your own authority uh, is with one truck, you only do so much that even if you're working with one individual for your uh, freight needs, you only calling him, let's say, if you're an OTR guy, mm-hmm. you only talking to that individual twice, maybe three times a week. Yeah, I mean, that's if you're shopping around. Because remember, uh, uh, these brokers, they're just as good at this game as you are. And, and, and also, if you're shopping around, but at the same time, like, even if you work just trying to work just with this one guy, you still, how, how many thousand loads you can do a week? Three and a half? Yeah. Tops. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So that's if you only using one guy. Right. But uh, as a as a business owner, as a as a somebody with a dream and your own authority, you're there for money. So you're not there to please a broker or a customer. You are there to build your business and at the same time build a relationship so later on you can provide the best service that you can provide better than everybody else out there and get paid very well for it because it's two-way street right and they think that that's the biggest challenge generating those relationships because if i'm like i'm i can tell you right now at some point i i went from dispatching a whole fleet so i already came with a business book of contacts when i when i started as a one truck mm-hmm. i lost all my contacts because i had nothing to offer Gotcha. Right. I had. I didn't had enough volume uh, of trucks to take as many loads to be able to build those good, solid relationships. And even like I, I communicated with the guys that I worked pri- prior, but at the end of the day, the volume was so small that I'm. St- I was still hunting for the top dollar all the time, and it just kind of. Went, so here you go. Up. So like it, that's what I'm saying. So so that's factual. And then you're going to have that broker, you know, that new guy that just started, uh, you know, rookie out of uh, TQL or whatever it may be. And then he's your only point of contact. He's just trying to, he just wants your truck. It doesn't, it, he, they're, they're going to make it easy for you, complacive uh, human behavior. They just want to get you complacive. It's easy. You call the guy, you get a load and now you get stuck, you know, one week, two weeks, three weeks. And now he's kind of your dispatcher, but at the rates that he dictates. Yes. Uh, so you're always going to get in, in situationships like that. You're always gonna get a shorter end of a stick. I've seen it. I've seen it personally. Mm-hmm. I've seen some, you know, weak dispatchers falling into that trap. We get so comfortable with this one customer or broker that we just keep taking loads from that guy. The market already changed. The rates are already different. We already improved. You can get more money by actually trying. But we keep knocking on that same door, and that same guy is paying you based on your track record the cheapest price yeah and and you know that happens in bigger fleets it's not just like the one probably you'll see a lot more in bigger fleets because absolutely that if you keep getting the load from your dispatcher let's say in the big fleet if you list on to us and you're getting the rate confirmations from one broker all the time Mm -hmm. you gotta call john yep because we have a problem because that means we have a Potentially, it could be just a consequence, but there is a big chance that you have a weak dispatchers, and this is not something we're willing to have. Uh, there you go. So at the end of the day, pay attention because we've seen situations, uh, again, I've been in tracking way over 20 years, and uh, I've seen dispatchers doing that. I've seen a uh, single truck on authority, uh, owner operators uh, falling victims to that. And, you know, comfortable is not always going to make you the most money. You got to be competitive. You got to be flexible. And you got to take every dollar you can out of your customer. That's your business. You're not a Schneider. You're not a Swift to be able to run a thousand loads and make, you know, a dollar per load profit and still be rich. Yeah. You got one truck. You got one business to make. And you got to make sure that you're making as much money as you can. So sticking to that relationship 
It's not a relationship, it's a situationship. Keep your options open, get the top dollar. Controlling expenses is another, another big, big, big item. So, you know, everybody knows fuel, insurance, uh, all that good stuff. I think we talked about that, the maintenance, uh, not, you know, but uh, one of the one that is worth mentioning that most people will not talk about taxes. Guys, be ready. And again, we're here to share, not, 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 not poking fun at anyone or anything like that. But, you know, been in this game and I know I got a guy once on a 1099. He actually told his accountant that, you know, uh, what we were giving him was uh, before uh the 25 percent mm -hmm. so now now however they did that he's you know the his accountant just shaved off 25 percent that that's that's this fee and whatnot and then he found himself in the world of hurt so that, those taxes are nothing to play with uh if you're not strong at that point get a, get a really good accountant that's gonna that does this right transportation taxes and and, and account for that you have to account for the taxes i i, I think it is extremely important you are better off getting a lesser accountant, meaning you know, you don't need like a doctor in accounting. You, you just need a solid, reliable accountant that actually works with trucking companies and that works with other owner operators. That's a certain uh, portion of their business is actually trucking. Because if you, if you come across and we exist, some accountant that uh, does everything else but not the trucking, He's not going to be aware of a lot of things that's going on in the trucking, that some things that you need to watch out for, other things that you need to pay attention to, and other things that uh, you may uh, you may not use a certain allowance of a tax break that you can use. And at the end of the day, that's your business. You got to make sure that you legally paying the minimum amount of taxes that you can pay. Yep. So you're better off investing in your business than just paying taxes of that profit. So there you go. Um, staying compliant. So DOT regulates. We have to just play the game and stay with and stay inside the sandbox. Um, I think this is a, this is an important topic, man, because it's always an ongoing uh, adventure. There's no there's no uh, silver bullet for this. No matter the size of the company. As a matter of fact, the smaller you are, you're probably taking more more risks and, <laughs> and chances than you than the bigger you are. Uh, but it's very real because, you know, you can you can build your truck company to three, two, three, four, five trucks and mess around and quickly get into a conditional situation, uh, get rated conditional. And now you got a world to hurt in front of you. So, guys, this is nothing to play with. It's, you know, this you can do everything right. And if this part is messed up, it's over. It's over. And uh, the biggest challenge. And again, I've been through multiple DOT audits and uh, I never miss them. It's just not a fun thing to do. Mm -hmm. uh, even though we we play by the book, uh, it is still not a not the most pleasant experience to go over DOT audit. And uh, the biggest challenge that, let's say, I learned at the beginning, and I think a lot of people learned that, that nobody, when you go through the audit, nobody cares about your stories. No, not at all. Uh, even though, so, let's say, if you get shut down for uh, for uh, improperly using a PC, and now you're getting hit for a false logbook, uh, over hours, uh, and so on, and then that DOT officer at the scale says, it's okay, just go to sleep for 10 hours, here's your sheet of violations. Not every state even have fines for it. Mm -hmm. Some some states like California, oh man, you don't want you don't want to get that ticket because it's going to be super expensive. And and but a lot of DOT officers are going to make it sound like oh it's okay, just go to sleep for uh, ten hours and uh, and you can go. And like it's over there and it's not. When you arrive to the audit end of that interaction, that can very easily be the end of your business. And. The other challenge, let's say that's your step one when going through, you know, like a one truck army. When you start adding more trucks, now you have drivers uh, running for you or other owner operators. Uh, that that feeling when you when you try to do things by the book, and people that have no skin in the game are willing to to just burn it, and 
we're gonna tell you it's okay the DOT officer said it's okay but <laughs> but once you know what you know once you actually have that experience you understand what's the true cost of that you understand that when the DOT audit is gonna come around it's not gonna be okay it's gonna be nowhere near okay so it can very easily be all your life build up gonna change dramatically and uh you know like the misuse of pc when somebody's gonna say oh man my my wife was sick and i was just trying to get home um okay maybe maybe somebody in safety department that's way too compassionate uh won't accepts it as a, oh it's okay then i can tell you right now the dot is gonna shut you down period yeah because now it's different now that you're here you find yourself as the owner everything's at stake everything you built for is right there in the hands of in the hands of somebody else so and, and you're gonna find plenty of advice out there on the internet uh because i've seen those gurus i think man like freedom of speech hell yeah but the stuff that these guys are saying is just insane because you're gonna have people saying don't worry about it you just shut down that company you reopen another one and you're good to go yeah but how much does that even cost like in, in and, effectiveness and man. also none of these guys that are saying that have actually successfully done it i i'd argue out of a thousand guys that are saying that maybe one or two have done it and maybe one have done it successfully and trust me if they're doing it they're not talking about it because those guys know one yes. phone number one phone number that makes a connection one, can, can one, kill your, one can kill your... number so <laughs> it's not free get out of jail card uh safety is a very serious business i think uh safety as far as safety you know staying safe and keeping public safe is good but in once you have once you have your own authority you got to follow safety to the T and uh, it's it's not a joke. It's a very serious thing. So if you building everything else, just like Christian said, up, creating something big and beautiful uh, and you totally ignoring the safety aspect of that, all that big and beautiful that you're building is going to go to waste very, very quickly. So at that point, ask yourself a question. Is it worth building something that's going to be torn apart at the first audit so there you go there you have it guys again there you go straight up no chaser these are some details some facts of what we've gone through and what we've seen so again digest it now you know about it uh research it uh and jump right in you got to make you got to make a move one way or another uh, fall forward and make it happen make sure you get some advice from the people that have what you want not the people that talk crap there you go all right, guys, take care, be safe, and we'll talk in the next video.